Hey everyone, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and this is my new electric rickshaw. I just bought it a couple days ago, I've been driving around, it is awesome, I have a lot to tell you guys about. Now I know you've got a ton of questions. How much did it cost? How fast does it go? How far does it go? Is it street legal? Do I have some awesome project planned to build in the back of it? I'm going to answer all of those questions and more right after this montage. All right, let me bring you guys in for the tour here. All right, so this is an electric rickshaw. Some people call these tuk-tuks, though tuk-tuks are usually uh, gas powered. That's where they get the name from because it sounds like tuk-tuk-tuk-tuk-tuk going down the road. Uh, this bad boy is a trike. It's got basically a motorcycle front end. And then on the back, it's got a electric motor built right into the axle there. So it powers both of those wheels. It's a 3.9 kilowatt motor. That's about, uh, the math like five and a half horsepower something like that so not terribly powerful it does get up to 28 miles per hour or 45 kilometers per hour though i haven't gotten it up that fast not because it can't do it just because i feel like if i hit a pothole at that speed the whole thing would just shake itself apart because the suspension is not great it's got a sort of okay motorcycle suspension fork up front in the rear though, it's just leaf spring suspension, so it's really bouncy, and in the back is really where all of that weight is, because there's that heavy axle, the motor, and of course there are the batteries down here as well. So let me show you where those batteries are. I gotta unhook the bed here. The bed actually latches down because it's a dump tilt bed kind of system. So let me unlatch that there. I generally try to keep it latched while I'm driving around so it doesn't sort of like bounce around, but once you have it unlatched, the whole thing just lifts up. It's a bit heavy. It does have that nice air piston under there and so this lifts up if you did want to do like dumping things you have that option you know you're like moving dirt leaves whatever but this also gives you access to the battery compartment here and to the controller now you can see how new this thing is because i still have the bubble wrap on the air piston here but uh, here's that access i was telling you about for the batteries this is an sla battery setup so that's a little bit annoying because they're really old technology batteries you know sla is nothing compared to lithium it doesn't last as long it's heavier it's less energy dense everything so at some point i would like to replace these six uh, 12 volt 60 amp hour batteries so I can put in a nice lithium ion setup uh, or probably lithium iron phosphate actually but for now it is you know working just fine um, it's 72 volts and 60 amp hours so it's about uh, I think 4,000 watt hours or so I gotta check the math on that I'm not really sure how far that's gonna take me I'm guessing something like 35 40 miles maybe about 65 kilometers though I haven't pushed it to the very limit because I really don't want to run out of battery in this thing and have to, you know, like push it or tow it or bring like a power station out to charge it. So I haven't like pushed it to the max to figure out what the range is and I don't really plan to do that. So while we're here, I can give you a better look at the motor here. What's interesting is the motor, it's kind of like the motor on my mini truck if you guys have seen that video. It's a very similar motor, approximately the same size actually. And it's also got this little transmission built into it. So you can see there's this cable running into the, uh, the motor box. Actually, it's the transmission before the motor. And that's a low high gear selector. What that does is it allows you to drop the rickshaw into low gear if you're going up a big hill or you're carrying like a really heavy load. Basically cuts the speed in half, but it doubles the torque. So you're like really powerful off the line. I generally keep it in high gear, but um, you know, if you were carrying something real heavy, you might drop it into low. All right, let me put this bed back down here show you some other features. So this bed itself has some really cool features. Of course it's got a tailgate in back, right? Like any good mini truck or rickshaw should have a tailgate. So you drop that sucker down. But let me show you another really cool feature. So if you're carrying some sort of big flat load, like maybe some four by eight sheets of plywood, you can actually open up the side gates and fold those suckers down too. When you open those up, you basically turn this thing into a flatbed truck. You can carry all sorts of big flat objects. So it's already quite a big bed here, but when you open that up, it gives you so much more possibility here for the kind of things you can load into it. So one other cool feature that's kind of hidden up here is this little bench seat thing. So when you unlock these clips, what is ostensibly the back of the front seat folds down. Oh, you gotta turn these. All right, still learn how this thing works. Hold on, there's an order of operations here. First, the side gates have to be up. I'll get this. 
Okay, now the reason those side gates have to be up is you gotta flip down these little rubber stoppers. And then when those are down, now this bench can come down. And now you've got yourself a bench in the back where you could fit a couple people or maybe three kids back here sitting side by side. So you can turn this into actually a people mover as well. And you still got a bunch of space in here for cargo too. Let's see your F-150 do that. All right, coming around to the cab here, let's take a look at the controls. So like I was saying, this is basically a motorcycle up front. We've got our motorcycle handlebars. Here's the throttle. You give that a turn and, oh, parking brakes on. <laughs> give that a turn and you start rolling. The uh, brake up here is actually the front brake. So it's um, a bit confusing if you're used to bicycles, but it's more motorcycle setup with the uh, front brake on the right side. If you pull this all the way back, you can put the parking brake here. There's also a parking brake over here for the rear brakes. The rear brakes are a pair of drum brakes and you step on this pedal here too, and that'll activate the rear brakes, though I pretty much mostly just use the front brake because the pedal's kind of annoying to use. If you had a real heavy load, it'd probably be a good idea to use the rear brake as well, but generally I'm just not going that fast. So you've got a basic display here. It tells you your speed in kilometers per hour, your battery gauge, though because this is lead acid battery and they're not great batteries, the uh, battery level seems to go up and down a lot as you're really gunning it. We've also got a windshield wiper up here which isn't amazing, but would probably do the job. And to be honest, I really like that this thing has a canopy because, you know, they sell these without canopies, but I like that if you're in the rain, you can, you know, get some covering there. If it's a sunny day, uh, you got some shade there. Uh, generally, it also just gives it more of a, a presence on the road. So when you're driving around and cars see this thing coming, they might think like, what is that weird thing? But at least they notice it. And you know, that way they're, they're less likely to hit you if they notice you. So again, it just gives you more of that presence. It also gives you a chance to add some real mirrors here. Though these things kind of vibrate a good amount. So they're not the best quality, but it's nice that they're there. It gives you um, a bigger headlight, big turn signals here. Basically just, you know, more of a, a presence. There's another cool feature here is that there's storage under the seat. So if you lift this sucker up, you get this storage box here. And right now I've got uh, the charger and the manual, like an extension cord in here. Um, but you could put a decent amount of stuff in here. It's got a main shutoff switch here, uh, which acts like a breaker and you can just turn the thing off if you're leaving it for a while. This little box here is a DC-DC converter, gets 12 volts out of the 72 volt batteries, probably runs the lights and those sorts of things. So that covers the main features of the rickshaw. At this point, let me close the back back up and maybe let's go for a ride together. We can, uh, you know, talk about how much it costs, is it street legal, and you can get a sense of uh, what this thing is like when it's actually driving around. All right, I've got everything buckled back down. Let's hit it. Now you might hear a slight pinging or two or 30. It's just because everything is haphazardly bolted together, that's all. Also these speed bumps, ooh, the speed bumps are a bit of a doozy. All right, so now the ride quality, I would describe it as good, not great. Actually, maybe decent, not great. It's, it's mostly the suspension. Oh, there's another speed bump. <laughs> so you can see that the uh, suspension leaves something to be desired. Kind of like in my mini truck, but honestly there at least it had, you know, real coil springs and everything. This is just leaf springs in the back, so there's not much you can do about it. In general, I'd say the electronics are quite good though. Like it's got good pickup, good responsiveness, decently powerful. It's just the, uh, you know, the suspension, oh, no, there's people. Just the suspension that really sort of digs the ride quality here. The other thing that's kind of awkward is that the back of the seat here is actually part of the bed. So when you're driving around and the bed bounces a little bit, you feel it move independently of the seat. Man, there are a lot of speed bumps on this road. All right, I picked a bad road for this bit. Well, let's get going on a bit of a faster road here. All right. Out on the open road. So you can probably hear that motor really whining now as it winds itself up. Uh, we're actually in low speed right now. There's three speed settings. We're in low. Uh, the vendor actually told me that most of the people he sells it to keep it in low just because the suspension makes it kind of hard to go really fast. If you hit a speed bump, you might, I don't know, spontaneously combust. I'm not quite sure. You probably hear the canopy bouncing around a little bit too. Basically, it's, it's a lot nicer to look at than drive, I would say. 
but it's still a pretty awesome vehicle. Now, a lot of people are probably wondering why would I even get something like this? If you know me, you know that I'm kind of a, a car-free kind of guy. And so, uh, generally speaking, I get around on two wheels. That's uh, you know, e-bikes, electric motorcycles, electric scooters, all that stuff. But sometimes, you know, you're driving down the road, you see something thrown out on the side of the street, maybe uh, some furniture, a uh, pile of wood, a bed frame you can use. Kind of the only one that sees those things is like, ooh, some free wood. Well, it's hard to pick that stuff up on a bike. Or maybe you want to move something, pick up a washing machine. Who knows? Sometimes you need a little more cargo space than you can typically get out of. Ooh. Sometimes you need a little more cargo space than you can put on a bike. And so something like this is nice in that it's not a full vehicle. It's easy enough to, you know, keep in your garage. It's not too big. It's only about uh, 10 feet long, I think. Maybe even a little less, actually. But you can still haul a bunch of stuff back there. In fact, this morning when I was filming, I know this looks set up, but I drove by some shelves that someone had thrown out, and I actually needed some shelves for a project I'm working on. So I was able to just grab those and throw them in the back. And it's those kinds of things where, like, yeah, you might be able to carry those on a bike, but it certainly wouldn't be comfortable. So for around-the-town utility tasks, I can absolutely see the use of something like this. it cost me? I paid about four and a half thousand dollars for this thing. It was 16,000 shekels here in Tel Aviv. And that probably sounds like crazy expensive to you, but believe it or not, that's actually a pretty good price here. I've seen these things go for like 25,000 shekels, which is more like, um, what is that, like seven and a half thousand or seven thousand bucks, something like that. One of the things is this is not Chinese, actually. This is actually made in Turkey. It's from a company called Volta. This is the VT5 model. And so it's kind of quasi-European construction, I guess, though. You know, I don't really care where it's made. You can have good stuff made in China, crappy stuff made in Turkey. You have good stuff made in the U.S., crappy stuff made in the U.S. It's not really where it's made. It's how it's made that's important to me. But the other thing is that everything is really expensive in Israel, especially imported goods because there's value-added tax. And so if you go on Volta's website in Turkey, I think they sell these things for more like 2000 bucks there. But uh, here you got to pay a little over twice that with the value-added tax. Now another question that I'm sure you're wondering is, is this thing street legal? So here in Tel Aviv, it kind of is and also kind of isn't. It's in a bit of a legal gray area. So these things are all over the streets here. You see them everywhere and you'll never get a ticket for using one, but they're not actually in the traffic code here. Uh, basically they kind of fit under the definition of a Kamnoit, which is like a mobility scooter. I don't know why I'm in the left lane. Probably move over. So it's kind of a, a mobility scooter, which uh, those things can have three or four wheels here, and they are street legal within certain parameters. This isn't exactly in those parameters, but whew, the police basically um, you know, view them as mobility scooters. And so that's why you'll see like hundreds, maybe thousands on the street here in Tel Aviv, because they're used by all of the delivery services, they're used by the companies that like stock up supermarkets, uh, package delivery. You often see them carrying around scooters like the Lime and the Bird and Tier scooters. They'll go around and pick those up to recharge and redistribute them. So they're sort of de facto street legal here, even if they aren't necessarily in the traffic code. They're still used everywhere and you'll never have an issue with it. You're not allowed to use them in the bike lanes. In the beginning, people used them in the bike lanes and then they made a law saying you couldn't do that, which I think is a good idea because these things shouldn't be mixing it up with bicycles. It's a lot bigger and heavier and if I'm on a bike, I don't want to see this thing barreling down at me. So what am I going to do with this thing? Well, partly I got it because it just looks like so much fun. Partly I got it because I do think it'll be useful for sort of around the town utility stuff. But also, I've got a couple projects in mind for this. Uh, one of the first things I want to do is make a solar canopy for it. So over the bed back there, put a big panel, something like, I don't know, four or 500 watts of solar power. That way I can charge this thing from the sun. Right now, I've got to plug into a outlet that's in the corner of my parking garage. 
and it's super annoying because I'm not technically supposed to park there. I found a spot it seems like no one uses, but not a great solution. So if I put a solar panel on the top of this thing, then that'll be nice because I can just, you know, pull it out of the garage and let it charge during the day. And I think with about a 500 watt panel, I can do a full charge in about one day. So, you know, just roll it out, let it charge up, roll it back in. But my ultimate goal for this thing is that I want to build a little camper in the back, like a mini RV, which I think would be awesome to have this turn into basically a tiny little three-wheeled electric RV. Ooh, green light. I don't know how practical it's going to be. And after driving it, I kind of think that I need to build everything inside of it out of like, I don't know, unobtainium to make sure it can handle all the jarring around. But if I can pull that off, then I think that would be awesome to have like a self-contained little electric RV that you can charge from the sun. There's like a little bed in there. Maybe I'll make it big enough for two. I don't know if my wife is really going to want to like travel around in this thing. Might have to make this an RV for one. But uh, I still think this would be such an awesome project to do. And a really cool thing to have in the end, a, a tiny little three-wheeled electric RV. So that's my ultimate goal. We'll see if I get there. It's on the to-do list of things that I really want to do with this project. The nice thing it is, really great rear visibility. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed that video showing off my new electric rickshaw here. I'm going to be back with more content in the future on it. Of course, I can't wait to build that solar canopy and hopefully that RV in the back. Until then though, we've got one more thing to do and that's to announce the winner of the giveaway for my last video. And the randomly selected commenter is... Bride of Bike Guy. So congratulations, just let me know which one of my books you'd like. You can choose from DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my newest book, The Electric Bike Manifesto. And if anybody else wants to win a free copy of one of my books, all you have to do is put a comment down below this video. You can say anything you'd like, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. If you don't want to wait that long, you can always find my books on Amazon. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time.